The Black Watch in World War I, Ladies from Hell. In the history of the British Armed Forces, there have been many regiments whose glory and fame were forged on battlefields across the world. However, there is a unit whose devotion to duty and gallantry earned it the honor to be ranked among Britain's finest. These are the men of the 3rd Battalion, the Royal Regiment of Scotland. This is the unit of Scottish Highlanders, also known as the Black Watch. The Black Watch is a unit with a long history of service. In the early 18th century, they were formed following the famous 1715 Jacobite Uprising in Scotland. For years afterwards, even though the rebellion was crushed, the northern regions of the country were far from being pacified. The warring clans were still causing trouble, and King George I's administration was unable to control them because he was not in a position to garrison his troops in Scotland for any length of time. So he decided to form a force among the Highlanders themselves to help maintain law and order in Scotland. On May 12, 1725, he commissioned men from four of the loyal clans, the Campbells, Grants, Frasers, and Monroes, and formed a force comprising six companies under the command of General George Wade. Their task was to maintain law and order in Scotland by preventing clashes between the clans. The unit became a regiment of the line of the regular army in 1739, with a total strength of 10 companies. The following year, the unit became the 43rd Highland Regiment of Foot, and in 1742, they were renumbered to the 42nd Regiment. Since then, the unit was also known as the 43. However, men of the 42nd were better known among their compatriots as the Black Watch, or Am Frankenden Do in the Scottish Gaelic dialect. There were a lot of unverified stories of how the unit earned the nickname. The most plausible was one regarding the dark colors of the tartan worn by the men, coupled with what they were required to do. Besides the recognizable dark tartan plaid, the Black Watch soldiers originally wore scarlet waistcoats and jackets with buff facings and blue tam shanter headgear. In the late 18th century, they adopted the red hackle on their caps, which became the most distinctive part of their uniforms. Even though they were initially raised to maintain order in Scotland, Men of the 42nd Regiment were soon deployed overseas. They fought in the Americas, North Africa, and Europe in wars against the French. Until the end of the 19th century, they served their sovereign in the Crimean War, India, Egypt, Sudan, and the Boer Wars. With the onset of World War I in 1914, the Black Watch was there to serve once again. 25 battalions were raised by the regiment during the war of which most fought in the trenches of the Western Front. Two battalions fought on the battlefields of the Middle East and the Balkans as well. The bravery and tenacity displayed in combat was shown in the battles in which they fought. From Givenchy to Marne, with Festebeer, Somme, Mesopotamia, Arras, and Ypres in between, the enemy got to know what it was like to fight the Highlanders. The Germans called them Der Diamond aus der Helle, the Ladies from Hell in reference to the kilts they wore and their ferocity in combat. From the Battle of Mons at the beginning of the war to the final assault against the Hindenburg Line in 1918, the Black Watch's distinct uniform together with the sound of their bagpipes made their presence felt on battlefields across Europe during World War I. Unlike previous campaigns, uniforms in the British Army during World War I prioritized camouflage in the trenches over parade aesthetics and regimental flags or standards. Gone were the days of lining up in rows to fire volleys. Now it was time to dig deep into the mud and prepare to repel massive assaults and take cover from the artillery bombardments. Black watch buttons, shoulder titles, and the famous dark tartan pattern kilt completed the uniform. Later, in response to the muddy, horrific conditions of trench warfare, kilt aprons and covers became standard issue once again to protect the uniforms from getting wet and dirty as they first appeared to be worn by Highland troops during the Boer Wars. These kilt covers came in two variations, a fully wrapped around design which featured a front pocket and another front apron design. Both covers had a cotton drawstring that tied around the soldier's waist, but where the fully wrapped version included a pleated rear, the apron only offered protection from the front. Many Black Watch soldiers wore a sporan, or a leather pouch that acted as a pocket. This was one of their most prized pieces of clothing. The kilts worn by the regiment did not have pockets, so men would utilize the sporan as a functional piece of clothing to store coins, fire-making equipment, or any other number of small, useful items. Accompanying the kilt and sporan were the various types of headdresses used, including the bonnet with the red hackle, the Glengarry cap, and the tam-o-shanter. 
The weapons and equipment used by the Black Watch included the Lee Enfield Mark I SML Lee bolt action rifle. The 1907 pattern bayonet that they carried on their webbing allowed the soldiers to fix the blade onto their rifle when mounting charges across no man's land to take enemy trenches. Before the war, the Black Watch consisted of seven battalions. Two of these, the first and second, were regular battalions. The third belonged to a special reserve, while the fourth, Dundee, fifth, Angus, sixth, Perthshire, and seventh, Fife, were part of the territorial force. Over the course of the war, this territorial force mobilized 12 new battalions. In addition, another five battalions were formed within Kitchener's new army. Plus, there was also one labor battalion. The first unit to arrive in France and experience the fighting was the 1st Battalion. They took part in a retreat from Mons and had a baptism by fire in the Battle of Givenchy from the 18th to the 22nd of December 1914. In this battle, the 2nd Battalion also took part before they were deployed to Mesopotamia to fight against the Turks. Then in 1915, the battalions of the Territorial Army and Kitchener's Army began to arrive in France. The severity of the combat immediately started to take a toll on the Black Watch. Even though the Highlanders fought bravely at Festebert, where they earned two Victoria Crosses, and Luz, they suffered heavy casualties. At Luz alone, the 9th Battalion had over 700 losses. In 1916, the Battle of the Somme left the bloodiest mark on the Black Watch. Like most of the British units engaged in the battle, the Highlanders too were heavily involved in a fight that lasted for more than four months. Five battalions of the Black Watch fought in the battle. The most notable actions were taken by the 6th and 7th Battalion at the Highwood, and by the 8th Battalion at the Delville Wood and the village of Longueville. On July 8, 1916, during the 8th day of the battle, the 8th Battalion of the Black Watch arrived at the front line and were deployed on the far right of the 9th Scottish Division. For the first few days, they prepared for the anticipated offensive. Finally, early in the morning of July 14th, following a heavy artillery barrage, the bagpipes announced the attack by the 8th Battalion on German positions in Delville, Wood, and Longueville. The sound of these bagpipes and the fierce onslaught by the Black Watch initially took the Germans by surprise. However, they quickly recovered and put up a stiff resistance. Despite the hail of bullets from German machine guns and the artillery barrage from the woods, the Highlanders reached the village and engaged the enemy in hand-to-hand -hand combat. The well-organized German in-depth defense made the job of seizing the village extremely difficult and exhausting. Nonetheless, for five days, the men of the 8th Division fought hard, and after driving the enemy out, managed to repel many counterattacks. The most intense fighting was on July 18th, which started with a heavy bombardment of the Longueville area and the Delville Wood. With the help of the 7th Seaforths and the 5th Camerons, the 8th Black Watch held the line that they had established in the village earlier but paid a heavy price for their efforts. At one point, the battalion was reduced to only 171 men. The 8th Battalion sustained 568 casualties in Longueville and Delville Wood. On July 19, to do their heavy casualties and battle fatigue, they were relieved by the Argyle and Sutherland Highlanders. Not far from there, the 6th and 7th Battalions of the Black Watch were thrown into a real bloodbath at Highwood. This position was the highest point on the ridge above the Somme Valley and provided an excellent overview of the battle. The British wanted to get a hold of it, but the Germans were determined not to give it up. The fighting around the ridge began on July 14th with unsuccessful attempts to reach the German lines. Despite the heavy barrage thrown on them, the Germans repelled every single British attack, inflicting heavy casualties. For two weeks, the British troops, including the 6th and 7th Black Watch, were dying in vain trying to reach the high wood. On the evening of July 30, 1916, the British made one more attempt to conquer the ridge. Men of the Black Watch were tasked with capturing the eastern and western corners of the enemy positions. The artillery bombardment that lasted for almost an entire day gave little results. The German defense was as strong as it was before. Met with devastating machine gun fire and German shelling, the Black Watch continued pushing forward until they were 25 yards from the German barbed wire. But that was as far as they would get. The 7th Highlanders were held up in a redoubt in the High Wood, while the men of the 6th Battalion had to take shelter in muddy, water-filled shell holes in the ground. The attack ended in bitter disappointment. The High Wood remained out of reach of the British, and too many bodies were left in no man's land. Men of the Black Watch tried to rescue their wounded comrades under cover of the night. On that day, the Black Watch lost 154 men. 
The heroism and the bloodshed of the Black Watch continued until the very end of the war. Their relentless determination carried on into the second and third battles of Arras and the third battle of Ypres, where the fourth and fifth battalions were reduced to no more than company strength. By the time of the armistice, on November 11, 1918, the Black Watch had lost 8,000 men. However, for the outstanding bravery shown during the conflict, the regiment was awarded 25 battle honors and four Victoria Crosses, the highest and most prestigious award a British soldier could earn. The Black Watch's contribution during World War I was just another chapter in the glorious history of one of the finest regiments in the British Army.